morning, early morning today. We have big games, big games. I'll see anyone catch the Champions League this week. There are quite a few surprises. <laughs> yeah. Who's going to be having the hangovers for, for the games today? But anyway, welcome today, Festus. Welcome to Kenya Fantasy yes, yes. League. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is my first time and thank you for the invite. But uh, Wanga, I know him as Wanga. He's been my friend. And we've been doing this, uh, uh, analyzing sports here and there as a way of also uh, having fun amongst ourselves. So thank you for the invite. No, no, no. Welcome, welcome, guys. Well, let's kick in. First, first things first, the big game on Sunday. Arsenal going away to City. I mean, they had a bit of a test run against Tottenham last weekend. That defence was solid. And again, against Atalanta, albeit Real with that amazing double safe and that penalty. I mean, how do, how do you look? How do you think this game's going to be going for you? I believe that uh, this this match coming next weekend is going to be really another test for Mikel Ateta because the previous, the previous games we've had from the previous seasons, the ones that we were supposed to win but lost, uh, I've always been a test, just like the West Ham game that we the sorry, the like sorry, like the Aston Villa game we had this this beginning of this season. It was a test to see what what he could do better than what he did last season. And I'll give him a thumbs up for getting four points from Man City last season. And having that we had at Tottenham last week, Atlanta over the week, uh, over the week, and now we're facing them tomorrow. Um uh, with the a blow on injuries. Key injuries like Odegaard because you see the Tottenham game we really lacked to create uh, creation of chances were really minimal because I think Odegaard plays a critical role in that in that midfield and we could see it in the Tottenham games. Yes, we were lucky to get a goal and that is what it it means to us. The three points is just important, but the Atlanta game we did play well. Atlanta also played very well, but I I believe that the chances we could have scored couple of them from Martinelli, the free kick from Saka. But from the open play games, I think we really need Odegaard. We will miss him for some time if he's not going to come back soon. So tomorrow, I think we have to just play defensive just the way we've, we've displayed for the past two games to be solid and uh, just create that goal when it when we get that chance. Because I know when Man City get a chance to score, they're not going to laugh at you. They're going to do it. So I think the best thing is let the boys, I'm expecting a solid defense from um, Julian Timber, uh, Saliba, Magales, and White. I, 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 be, I believe that the ones who are going to start, I have no worries on goal. We've, we have a superb goalkeeper, David Dreyer. He's proven that over the, over the, over the years, over the, the, the past season and this season. So I'm expecting a good defensive display. My only worry is how are we going to survive in the chances, chances, chance creation in the Man City game because we know they also have a good defense and that midfield with Rodri who really disrupts the play of people in the in the in the, in the build up. So I just expect I expect more from the midfield but in on defense side I think I am confident so far. Yeah. Uh Festus welcome again. Uh I think just quickly I wanted to get your view on this. I mean we know Arsenal in the defense I mean they're quite solid. We've seen that in the last two games. But looking ahead uh, it's just come out that Odegaard actually has got quite a big injury uh, to his Arteta analysis on ligament damage on his ankle. I mean, they seem, you know, they seem quite flat with that Odegaard last game, uh, the last two games. When you look at it. who who's gonna who's gonna fill that role for them? Uh, I think it's going to be a very tough match for uh, Arsenal. Uh, now that I want to agree with my brother who has said uh, uh, without Odegaard. Uh, Arsenal is uh, very flat as far as uh, creativity is concerned in the midfield. And we've seen uh, in the two matches that uh, Arsenal have played without uh, Odegaard playing, they've really, really, uh, they've really, uh, I think uh, they've been caught uh, flat footed because they don't create chances. You see, the ball is uh, the ball is not flowing the way we we we've, uh, we've always seen Arsenal play. Uh, the, the the ball always flow because they have creativity in Odegaard. Uh, I like my brother. I don't have problem with our defense. Uh, remember, I'm an Arsenal fan, so that's why I'm saying our defense uh, because uh, before or last season we saw how uh, Saliba and uh, Gabriel 
dealt with uh, Haaland for the first season running. Uh, we didn't see Haaland scoring against Arsenal because uh, at home, Arsenal uh, won 1-0. Then at uh, Etihad, they drew 0-0 and uh, Haaland played in uh, both matches. So I'm expecting to see Saliba and Gabriel dealing with, uh, with Haaland. And also, I have no problem with our goalkeeping. Raya has been, uh, has been doing a good job. So my problem is only on the at, uh, attacking line. Uh, because we've seen, we are, uh, since Odegaard got injured, we've not created chances. You saw in Atalanta match, we only created uh, one chance, and it was a free kick that was taken by Saka. In the entire uh, entire 90 minutes, we didn't create any other chance. And uh, the, 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 chance, the only chance that we got away from the free kick, it was uh, the opportunity that uh, uh, Martinelli uh, uh, was supposed to tap in, but the ball went over the bar. So I think uh, if, uh, if if uh, Kevin De Bruyne, because I, I the, the matches that I've watched Man City playing against Arsenal, the only thorn in Arsenal's flesh has been uh, Kevin De Bruyne and uh, Bernardo Silva. If uh, Kevin De Bruyne will not play tomorrow, I think it will be a relief to Arsenal. But another thorn uh, will will play. I'm expecting Bernardo Silva to cause uh, uh, to, to cause a problem uh, to Arsenal's defense. So. As an Arsenal fan, uh, I'm just sitting to see uh, what will will happen because uh, currently I believe Manchester City is uh, above Arsenal in terms of uh, uh, the squad because we've seen Odegaard uh, as the only person who can create uh, the, the flow in, in, in any game when uh, Arsenal is playing. And I don't see uh, if they have a replacement for Odegaard in terms of creativity. Okay. Uh, Steve, I mean, yeah. you know, you've been out there, out there with the camera. You're getting a feeling of how the fans out there are thinking about it. Let's just quickly have a quick look at what they're saying. No. Yeah. Man City will definitely beat, yeah. beat Arsenal, Arsenal yeah. in this game because yeah. Odegaard is out in, in injury. Okay, for me, yeah. I think like Arsenal is going to win or draw, yeah. but we can see that Odegaard, Odegaard is not around. Yeah. So, I think there's a possibility for a draw yeah. because you can see the defense of Arsenal yeah. and the goalkeeper that they have, yeah. David Rye. You can see the way the goalkeeper makes a lot of saves. Yeah. So personally, I go for Arsenal or Arsenal to win yeah. or to draw because I'm a, you know I'm from London. Yeah. Man, City will win over Arsenal with a defeat of three to one because City has masterclass players and uh, Alan will score. Alan must always score, and uh, Arsenal, as you know. In their defense, there is Saliba, man of errors. Yeah. I feel like Arsenal will take the day with 3 0 because even though we don't have our captain Odigan, but Saka, our star boy, will be there, you know, for the team. Yeah, so I feel like Arsenal will take the day. I think the game between Arsenal and Man City tomorrow, we're going to end up in a draw because at first, Arsenal, they don't have their key players like the captain Odigan. And the matter of fact that I don't like Man City because they are like bullies of EPL. So I guess they're going to end up in a draw. Okay. Welcome again, guys. Steve, so what I'd like to find out from your take is, yeah, I mean, how do you look at this? Everyone always keeps saying, you know, you, Arsenal playing against Tottenham, playing against Atalanta. This is the test. But on Sunday, you don't really get a bigger test than this. I mean, this is the test of tests away to City. So in your yeah. feeling, I mean, if Arsenal go there and get something from this, how would you take this? Uh, I think, uh, number one, we have to highlight the fact that uh, last season, we saw what Rodi said after the Arsenal match, when uh, Arsenal managed to get a draw against them. That is uh, the mid-mid draw. Uh, Rodri said Arsenal went there to play. They, play, they saw uh, Arsenal play for a draw and they went for it. At the end of the day, it played crucial when it came to the matters of title dress. So I think uh, today, I'm expecting uh, Arsenal to go in this match. Uh, as much as they don't have their captain, Odegaard, who brings uh, creativity in that particular midfield, but uh, they have quality players. I think they have to bring the likes of uh, Jorginho in the team. We saw uh, Thomas Party conceding a penalty against Atlanta, a game that clearly Arsenal clearly didn't perform. You see, they had a single shot on target, which was a free kick in the entire game. 
and attacking wise they were so blunt the only chance they had that uh martinelli wrote uh over the top yeah but you're not uh, expecting arsenal to go out there and attack city are you i'm not expecting from mm. what i saw from atlanta i'm not expecting uh, arsenal to go out because clearly they miss uh martin odegaard but they have the likes of trossard who have our impact players who I think are coming off the bench can cause trouble to that uh, city defense, which is so, so solid. Uh, you see the likes of Ruben Diaz and uh, Ederson, the keeper. You might say David Dry is good, but is David Dry that good? Or is it that the Arsenal yeah, defense he is. is good? <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah. I think, I think uh, yeah. if, if, it's, if you talk about uh, goalkeeping, uh, Arsenal has a very good defense, which protects David Dry. Ah, uh, no, I won't let you get away with that one. No, no, no. David, David Raya, he's, he's proven yeah, his work. But Dreyer, that's not a discussion. David Raya <laughs> actually turns out for big moments. And you saw the penalty save against Atlanta, which was actually superb. And also, you saw the other game. He also made a, pen, a save. Uh, the Aston Villa game. The Villa game, yeah. When, uh, yeah, when Watkins was about to score, which could have played a crucial uh, match and he went on and did in that game. So, I think you have a... I see he has all the facts about Raya and his... Disputing the fact that he's a good, he's a good <laughs> goalie, because I see, I, I think he had another good saying. There's a match that we drew against us, uh, Tottenham last season. He had a superb. He has a very good reaction rate, man. Yeah, that yeah. guy is good in reaction. You can't say the defense mm. is helping him to react. The defense is supposed to cover him when he's he can't get back up. But from a penalty well, kick is... and, and a save. Yeah, that is a superb goalkeeper. No, I don't care. I don't care what you say. If if there's any other goalkeeper that faced those shots, it would have been a goal in the Premier League. Yeah, of course. That's not even like I don't think there's a discussion. But, he's but when he comes, yeah, I mean, he's got. Is he had the most clean sheets last season? Of course. Uh, uh, this season yeah. again, he's he's proven when that defense gets penetrated, he's there waiting. He's he's sharp enough to be there and to make those double saves already early on in the season in in big games like that as well. That's that was. That was not something small. And but of course against City, it's gonna be Haaland waiting. That's gonna be a different uh Abri, are you expecting the same matchup of uh of uh Saliba and Haaland? Uh, you mean to play? No, the, the, the I always see Saliba on uh, on the case of uh, Haaland all the time when we play. Are you expecting that tomorrow or they will switch uh, with, uh, no, I, I think I think, I think Saliba I think Saliba uh, last season against Haaland from my point of view, I think it's been a little bit overblown. You know, mm -hmm. I think it was, it was more like Arsenal squeezed out the midfield more than Haaland, you know. Uh, but I think this time round, I think Arsenal's main problem is going to be the lack of Odegaard. That lack of creativity in the midfield is going mm -hmm. to be an issue because they're going to be a bit one-dimensional. And they, I mean, look, at the end of the day, you, you, there's no shame in going to City and sitting back to hit them in counter-attack. Like, I don't care who you are. There's no team in the world that's going to City. Haaland is not one of our problems. Our problem will be Kevin De Bruyne if he will play and uh, Bernardo Silva. Last season, <laughs> we dealt with uh, Haaland in both matches. In terms of physicality, uh, Nani, uh, we call him uh, Saliba. Saliba dealt with him uh, uh, very, uh, let me say, ruthlessly. And he didn't, uh, the crosses that were being brought into the box, they were inter uh, uh, intercepted by the, by Gabriel and, and, and Saliba. So I believe uh, the, the duo We'll uh, we'll deal with him ruthlessly in quotes. Yeah, but they have to. I think if, from my point of view, Martinelli and Sterling have to start that game. I think Sterling needs to start. We need Sterling's pace up front, up, up in that forward line because the problem is Kai Havertz. He's not Kai Havertz. The centre backs somehow weak. They, yeah, they they will, they will sit higher with Kai Havertz. They they don't they're not afraid of his pace. They'll catch him. You know, mm -hmm. uh, especially with Carl Walker, but we know Carl Walker doesn't like Martinelli, <laughs> and uh, Diaz doesn't like. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> Nightmare. So, and, and and the thing is that, that the only way Arsenal are going to play this game is to sit back, soak it up, and when they do get the ball, don't waste it. They try you know, counter attacks. Hit that counter. You, you got Sterling and Martinelli. Because Martinelli there. is very pacey. The City are going to City are going to be worried about that counter attack. That's that's the only way. But if you try and come out and play toe to toe, or pass around them, that's what City yeah. like. City like teams to come out and. And try and play the passing game, you know, and that's you don't you don't. I mean, Guardiola shown that for the, for his whole career, you don't play that game against Guardiola. This is only one winner. And, and I think when you look at that uh, the other match, Manchester City against Inter Milan, you saw uh, how uh, Azabi or rather the team of Inter Milan was so tight when, as far as their defense was concerned, yeah, they didn't even manage to create those chances. Uh, the Man City usually to create. So I think. If Arsenal can manage to be tight defensively, 
uh, much they can be able to spot uh, to stop Erin Haaland, who has been superb. We saw he scored uh, a breast the last game, and he, before that he had scored a back to back hat trick. Uh, but last season, Saliba managed to hold Haaland for the two legs. Haaland did manage to even get a shot on target, but uh, yeah. Arsenal going into this particular <laughs> match. <laughs> Going into this, this particular match, I think Arsenal, they really need to up their game. Without their captain, I don't think if they stand a chance. They're going to get thrashed. No, no. For me, it's not, this is, this okay, is not Arsenal, a must-win uh, uh, This is not Arsenal a must-win game. Lose, but not thrashing. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's not, this, is not, this, is not a, this is not This is not. a must-win game. What's more important? It's not a must What's more important game. is don't lose. That's, yeah, don't lose. That's important for the morale and for the next games is don't lose. Because if you go to yeah. City... And it doesn't matter even if they pelt you. If you have that defence holds in and you get a draw, that's it. Arsenal will go through the rest of the games coming up. They'll go through the rest of the teams coming up. But if they lose that game, you know, it's going to be almost like, okay, you know, title's kind of already... <laughs> it's kind of... Even though you can't predict the Premier League, you never know what can, you know... Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, how long... Yeah, I think... Or, I think or, 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 or someone get injury. Abdi also mentioned the issue of uh, Harvard. Uh, I don't... I, I always say that that guy just... He's always running on luck. And every time in a game when he, he's, he's not lucky, he's just like another headless chicken running around. Because I don't know what guy is doing because he cannot hold the ball or just supply to somebody who can go forward. Because, you see, I can, I, can, uh, I can go back to the Atlanta game before the penalty. I remember he had the ball and he lost it very cheaply. And that is what caused the, the, that caused the attack that we that, uh, ended up, uh, that Thomas Party ended up... Uh, fouling inside the penalty. I remember it started from that free kick that he lost the ball cheaply just in the midfield. Yes, he's, he's coming back, but do we do we expect him? We don't, we, I don't think, I, there's no time I see uh, Havertz holding the ball and expecting him to pass because I think he either holds the ball, he gets fouled or takes the ball outside. He's not the kind of person that can supply the ball to Martinelli mm. and Saka, you see? Because all the time he can, he's always been the person who you can supply the ball to. I, I don't want. I don't expect much from him. I'd refer back to when we had Oliver Giroud. He wasn't a good supplier, but the good thing about yeah. Oliver Giroud, he could hold the ball, yeah. pass it to someone who could supply him. Pass but Harvard cannot him. do that. He cannot hold the ball, supply to someone who can supply him the ball. That is the problem I have with Harvard all the time. I I observe his body movement and all that. I think such a game as this, because we're not going to. Play all attack. If you're thinking about the counter attack mode, I know I don't know if you think if it makes sense. We've always uh, discussed the issue of having Martinelli playing forward at times. We can try and put uh, Sterling and Saka and try to put Martinelli on that forward because we. They, they, I know they can all drop back. That's one thing I'm sure about them. And then because they know they are paceful players, we we gonna we because I think this game is all about holding back and using that opportunity when it comes because. If we have Harvard in that midfield, it's going to be destroyed by the likes of Harvard. Uh, sorry, by the likes of uh, Rodri. Rodri, with, with the lack of Odegaard, because Odegaard can, his, his mindset can disrupt midfielders, uh, defensive midfielders. But now that we don't have, we don't have him, and uh, we know that the midfielders that we have right now, they're not more of a chance create, creating, uh, create, create, creating players. They're more of a, like holding and defensive. I think we need peaceful players, three good peaceful players in front and in the wings, just when that opportunity comes. Because I know defensively, I know the boys are going to step up unless we fall short of luck in the defensive. But, uh, role but, but I think uh, one expect. thing, yeah, I think one thing, uh, Steve and Abdi, you have to agree with me, Festers, is this is the Premier League, like one of the best leagues in the world. Injuries are always part of the game. It's high time Arsenal fans stop complaining without Odega this, without Odega that. Nobody is complaining. Nobody is complaining. <laughs> yes, nobody is compl giving options. Nobody is complaining. complaining. We are just analyzing. It's, it's like it's like the Odega is the center. You said honestly without. Odegaard. Yes, he is. He is. So you had the chance. Uh, the transfer window. You could have signed uh, another midfielder who could have brought that creativity in the team if you knew. Because when you look at the other teams, uh, last last season, this is what Eric Ten Hag of Manchester United used to complain. Our players are injured. I, I don't have the defence. And, you know, by the end of the season, when he finished number eight, nobody cared about the injured player, players. So I think uh, if as far as uh, signing is concerned, Arsenal had a transfer window. If they felt that this position of Odegaard really 
Odegaard is a crucial player and without him, they cannot do uh, well. They could have brought in somebody else. Uh, we saw uh, you know, brought in Pirino, who is also <laughs> I think, Wanga, you're getting it wrong at this point. Because yeah, I was correct. saying, the fact wrong. that we don't have Odegaard right now, we need to think of better options. We are not saying that we're going to die because Odegaard is not there anymore. We have players. Yeah. We just want we just want the team to restructure itself in a way that we can create a better chance. That is why I was giving a suggestion. We're giving suggestions of the likes of Sterling to start because because of Odegaard, that's, that's, reggae is reggae is not going to stop for Arsenal to play. We have to play. We are not complaining. That's, We're that's, just saying that it's unfortunate. You team it's unfortunate for Arsenal that we don't have Odegaard. It's not it's, it's not the end of the road. It's just mm. unfortunate because we know he is a. We know you know they know. He is a key player in Arsenal. And again, I want, I want a, a minute, Abdi. No, no, no. A minute. I wanted to remind <laughs> my brother that when uh, you are preparing for the season, the preseason, you can't predict that Steve will get injured, so I need to replace him before he okay. gets injured. So uh, at, at, uh, injuries are part are yeah. as I uh, can compare injuries to an accident. You can't predict that. Uh, 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 Odegaard or Martinelli or maybe Gabriel Jesus will get injured. You, you just <coughs> reinforce the positions that you feel uh, you are shot in. For Abdi, and I think when we talk about injuries, we've seen uh, a number of players complaining about, uh, you know, the amount of schedule or the amount of fixtures of games they are playing. And if that are uh, contributing to injuries, we also uh, players threatening that they'll go on strike. We saw what Rodri said. Uh, we saw what Julius Kunde said. They said the amount of games that they are playing, it's, they, it's like the fans care about football, but they don't care about the players. So I think this also uh, contributes uh, to the number of injuries. Yeah, yeah, that, but uh, we are yeah, carrying I'm, I'm not. I, I disagree with Rodri. Why, why do the fans need to care about the players? I mean, these these are just they're overpaid individuals. <laughs> they don't need to be worried. They get paid <laughs> a lot of money to work like what two two times a week, three times a week, and playing a match for ninety minutes. Yeah, I, there's no sympathy there, mate. It's just like people people do like a lot more. Play. People do a lot more harder work. You know what I mean? To run around and train getting paid two hours and three hours a day. Most. Yeah. They're, they're complaining and they're getting paid for doing what they love most and something that they've been doing all along. They, they don't just get like, paid. I mean, how much, is Rodri, how much is Rodri being paid saying he's going to go on a strike? You tell me you're going to go on a strike if you're getting paid £300,000 a week. <laughs> to run around. Like that. that's, how, that, that's, that's just, that's a lack of like, just doesn't understand like the fans that are there in the cold who are working class, who don't have money, who save up to come and watch them only for a player to say, oh, you know, you're you're hitting us too hard. You're Manchester City as well. If you get injured, there's another guy coming to play for you. Go and rest if you're tired. <laughs> it's, it's okay. You can, you can go and have a little break if that's too much for you to handle. How many games did he play? Um, okay. Just on your take. Well, just quickly, give me predictions for the for Manchester City scoreline uh, against Arsenal. Uh, start with you, Festus. What, what are you predicting? Uh, in case of a win, I think City will win 2-1. In case of a draw, uh, it can be a nil-nil draw because uh, Arsenal's attack is very blunt. So nil-nil in case of a draw, 2-1 in case of a win for Man City. Okay. Uh, Steve, in Spain, what's, what's your prediction? Uh, I'll go for... I'll just be biased because I'm a Arsenal fan. Let me just be biased and be, be motivated. I don't want to go to facts. I'll just say, I, I just hope Arsenal can, can win the, on 2 nil or 2-1. I don't know. I'm not expecting a draw in that game. Yeah. One one man must go down. I'm not expecting a draw for this game. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's fair enough. Uh, Steve? Uh, as a Manchester United fan, um, and also as a football fan, I think it, it will be a very tough match. Uh last season we saw a draw. I'm hoping I'm predicting for a draw. Uh, but uh you saw last game it was boring. So but uh we, if you look at Manchester City, I think they beat Arsenal by a magic no. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's a good one. <laughs>